Hi. Hi, Leah. Hi. Nice to meet you. What's going on? Pause. <laughs> Second pause. <laughs> Awesome. Now, what would you say? Now, Dave talked a lot about like kind of frequency, and I think that what makes you you put out a frequency that attracts people. You have a certain something there, and I'm not even talking about the physical appearance. I think it's about really, truly being like being yourself. Did you have a? Did you like? <coughs> you drink. When it came Water. to LinkedIn, or was there something that you kind of switched or changed in your approach that resonated strongly with folks that helped build the business? I've always just been me. From the, I I I had a conversation with someone recently. I won't go too deep, but when I was around ten, which is the kind of age that we all start getting really outside influenced and what we should be and who we shouldn't be, I was going through childhood trauma at that point after losing my dad, and I was so confounded. There was so much going on in my life that what other people thought of me wasn't relevant. That didn't even factor in. So when I was then going through my teens, I kind of just carried on like I don't care. I don't care what other people think, I'm just going to do my own thing. Then I didn't go to university, I dropped out of school at 16. I went into a job, into jobs where it didn't matter who I was. They, they hired me and liked me and I did a good job. And then I was working for myself. So I have never been in an environment where I've been required to be anybody but myself. And if I have gone into one of those environments, I've left quite quickly and said I don't want to be here. This is uncomfortable for me. Um, and I don't like the people I'm surrounded by. So when I came onto LinkedIn, I originally thought I don't really belong here this is going to be one of those places I don't stay because I'm not I'm not going to fit in um actually I just went ah fuck it <laughs> if they don't like me it doesn't matter I I will just keep going and seeing what happens and and as it turns out that attitude is exactly what has benefited me is because it's other people have drawn confidence and inspiration from the fact that I've done that and I get messages every day from from predominantly women but men as well saying that's what they take from what I what I say and how I present myself it really it really is commendable showing up in the power Dave and you know this is showing up as your authentic self and I think it's hard in this day and age of social media and thinking that we need to be something or looking at folks who are celebrities or influencers and have this image that that's what we need to be to stand out but I think Leah is an incredible example of it sounds so cliche, but just be your freaking self, right? Because it's so much harder to be somebody else. We've all been there. Dave, you and I have had serious conversations about that. Trying to be something that you're not is so much work and effort. And when you peel that layer away there, it's so much easier to stand out. Well, I kind of made it difficult for myself not to stand out now, so <laughs> I'm just going to embrace it now. <laughs> so, Leah, leave us, leave us one moment of positivity. Leave us one one kind of that carrot at the end of the stick for you into 2021 what's your goal what's that mantra that you're repeating to yourself every day to keep your fire lit and moving forward um getting back out on a holiday is my big thing i want to travel again and creating a an income that does not require my time all the, means that me and my son are free to roam the world a bit more when we're safe to i love it so, and Leah, i i me I greatly appreciate you and our relationship and our friendship and our funny little uh, WhatsApp exchanges. It, it's really awesome. Um, and I wish you and your son the absolute best, healthy, happy, prosperous 2021 and beyond. We will get out there, we will travel. You know that I'm coming to the UK at the end of next year. I'm putting it on the mark right now. I'll be out there in the fall and we will finally meet up and have a big old LinkedIn party out there. I hope so. All right, it was lovely to meet you, Dave. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye. Isn't it fun to just meet new people? It's oh just, yeah, she's awesome. It's, it's, it's this thing about authenticity and we talk about it all the time. People throw this word around. Like, I, I'll be honest, I, I think I am my most authentic self, I'd say 85% of the time. That's pretty because good. You, I got, I'm not. I, 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 I got like business and things where I think I need to be something else. Yeah, and, and you will, especially in the holidays with your family and which, Brings up my biggest revelation when it comes to frequency, strength of signal, spectrum, and clarity of message. So, you know, I was the exact opposite uh, of Leia, right? I grew up 
where I was worried about what my siblings thought, my family thought, my community. I went to school. So all the people from elementary, junior high, high school, college, law school, always then business. Every, you know, I was a chameleon. I could go through a party and give two completely divergent opinions at the same party just to please other people. Uh, but what I think is the freedom of LinkedIn, why Leia does well within the social media context, is that it's so much easier, you know, and you brought it up right here with your 85% mark. It's so much easier just to be yourself when you know, you know what, there's 4.4 billion people out there and, you know, whether I'm Dr. Pimple Popper or the nail polish lady or, you know, the whatever stupid stuff is out there that I don't resonate with, there's millions of people that are going to align and resonate and F the rest of you. But I find it ironic because I'm like you, I'm somewhere between 85 and 90% because I'm getting a little bit harder on my family of being myself and saying, you know what, I am who I am and that's who I am. You know, this is what you get, but there's still 10% of me when I'm talking to like ants I haven't seen that put on the, the, the mishpuka Dave Meltzer, the proud, you know, and put a little bragging on it. But it's so easy to be yourself and so many people think the opposite, it's counterintuitive. You, if anywhere on LinkedIn and Instagram, this is where you should be yourself. Save, save the fake shit for, for Hanukkah. I, I, I agree. <laughs> and, and I want to bring anyone who's watching here who doesn't know. I think Dave, this is the fourth, maybe the fourth time that Dave's been on my show. I think the fifth time, it's kind of like Saturday Night Live. You get a green jacket. Nice. And I would like, you know, Chevy the Chase pipe and, and the... uh, Bill Murray in the, in the green room of Saturday Night Live at 30 Rock over here. But Dave said something to me. Um, I think it was early April when I started doing the daily shows. And this is something that really, truly resonated with me. He gave the analogy and said, in an airplane, when you have the safety instructions and the flight attendant is standing in front of you and they say, in case of a sudden loss of cabin pressure, the oxygen mask is gonna fall, put the oxygen mask on yourself first before taking care of the person next to you. And it really sunk in. And I think that's something I really said where I need to take care of myself right now and be the absolute best I can mentally, physically, business-wise, so I could take care of this little girl and her brother, she's right here, she's kind of low. You wanna say hi to Dave? She's right here. Hi. Oops, she's dropped right K there. K Sitting next to me. She's because awesome. we're not our best selves, who, who's gonna take care of them? You're, you're receiving is so important and I have leaned into the idea that I can't give what I don't have. I will give you a little bit of a caveat since your kids are there. There is a second part to the airplane, which I learned on Southwest, right? That put your oxygen on yourself and then put the oxygen on the one with the most potential next and then work your way down in case you have more than one kid. <laughs> It's a general statement of, of taking care and like, let's talk about how you have kind of shifted over the last nine months from a business perspective, going back to all my guests, one of the things that each one of us has kind of said and resonates is, is that I don't like to use the word survivors, I like to use the word that we're tenacious, we have the tenacity, we have that fire inside, and we also have the ability to pivot and kind of see through the seams and the cracks there, but how have you pivoted your business in your direction? I mean. I don't know, God, how many miles you fly, fly every year, how many public appearances you're doing, keynotes, coaching, and all that. How did you have to change? You know, for me, it was a matter of expenses. Uh, you know, I made a lot of major changes because what I did is I started taking inventory of my capabilities, my skills, my knowledge, and my desire. And then I took inventory of what I had resources-wise that were aligned with the capabilities that were aligned with or synergistic to what was doing well during that period of time, what was stable during the period of time, and also project on what I think is gonna do well in the future. And so I sold a building, I got a studio, I focused more on my personal brand, I leaned into the TV show aspect of what I do. And you know, it was a major transition, but it came down to, man, was I wasting a lot of money over ego. You know, I, I was like a rap star, man. As much as I told people, you know, hey, you know, there's the humble Dave, I was so insecure still traveling with everyone. I needed to be in person. You know, I, I couldn't do an interview on Zoom. I had to be in person with the greatest celebrities, athletes, and entertainers. Uh, and it was extremely expensive. It took a lot of time. I do more in one day than I used to do in two weeks I, because of the efficiencies and the uh, pivoting that I did. Isn't that awesome, that level, that level of productivity and focus that you can have when you strip away the excess? When you can strip away all those unnecessary things. I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. I mean, 
I have this vision of having this studio one day and having everyone kind of coming in and having like this kind of Howard Stern thing going on there from the, the studio perspective. But you don't need that, right? You, you've yeah. seen that you, I mean, look at you, you have a, a green screen behind you, you can change it to be wherever you want. I think, are you still doing shows from like your, your, your closet? I mean, yeah. You think Did... about the reach that you have, the new audiences, right? You have so, so many more, and, and they're seeing a much more authentic, don't get me wrong, we love the the, the, the one-on-one kind of interviews you're doing with like Portnoy and, and Gary Vee and all those folks, and we'll get back to that one day. But I see that you're connecting with so many more, we'll call them folks like me, like everyday kind of entrepreneurs and business folks out there. And I think that your reach and your message is really resonating a lot stronger in the last nine months. I, when I told people I was having you on, on my show and they were connected, people like, oh, Dave Nelson. I'm like, how do you know Dave? <laughs> people that I wouldn't think would know you. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I think it's nice because even the bigger guys, I have more access to, you know, Cameron Diaz and, you know, you know, Emmy winning and Academy Award winning guys and huge billionaires, owners of teams are much more like, look, they've, I've known all of them, but they, they're so much more accessible now via Zoom than going through the hassle of flying down to Dallas, going through security, getting to the star, dealing with Jerry Jones's hectic schedule to fit in. It's so much easier for him to walk up to his computer and spend 20 minutes with Dave Meltzer than a big old plan. And then the worst part was, you know, 10 people wanted to go meet Jerry Jones, so I had to bring all of them along with me. The entourage. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. I started to put together uh, a, a dream list, and, I, and I'm starting to formulate. I'm like, there's some people now. I've been doing a lot of these shows. I've been putting in my reps there. I'm like, now's a good time more than ever before we kind of break through this. I'm like, who do I really want to have on my show? Who do I really want to have those conversations with? And starting to come up to that for me. I'll talk to you about that offline because I think it's, it's... Yeah, well, let me know how I can help you too. You know, I'd be happy to make introductions and recommendations. We've done over 600 uh, episodes now of The Playbook alone, uh, let alone Office Hours, let alone the TV shows, awesome. yeah, yeah, Elevator Pitch and Two Minute Drill. So I, and it, my network is your network, bro. I appreciate that. What are you going to do with all that content? I mean, you've had some fascinating conversations over the last 10 months. I mean, is there a game plan here? Are you going to pull out the knowledge? Is there a book coming? Like, what's happening with all this? So, you know, for me, it's always four prongs and four strategies. The first one's obvious. I capture everything. So I capture my coaching calls. I capture my private group. I capture this here. The next is to prioritize modification. So for me, it's just taking everything that we have. Now, I've created a Dave Meltzer search engine, right? Search.dmeltzer.com. I created it for myself, but now I give it out because so many people have questions for me. They can just go to search.dmeltzer.com and say, what do you mean by be more interested than interesting? And every video I did on be more interested than interesting comes up. I did it internally so I could keep track of finding videos that I want to post that are pertinent or relevant to something that may be going on. Or a person, you know, like Kevin Green from the Hall of Fame that may pass. All I have to do is type in Kevin Green and the video comes up, right? So it's really an effective tool. But then the amplification part is the next strategy. So people, you modify to amplify it and you have to have a different timing on amplification. Meaning a lot of people think I'm going to post this today in this format and this is going to be the result. It has nothing to do with it because of the fourth strategy I have, which is perpetual. So I'm actually uh, creating a strategy of content for my grandkids and great grandkids because I know I'm always going to be accessible and I want to see how these things fit together and I can organize it. I know I spent a lot of money on that search engine and it's going to really pay off over the next 20, 30 years. Yeah, it's good you're going to invest into it. So you're, you're talking about, you, you posted a really cute picture of uh, you, your three kids, right? Four, four. Four. Three four. girls. Three girls and the 10-year-old was there. It's probably because my wife looks so young. You probably thought, oh, yeah. That... <laughs> yeah I, set, I set you up for that one. Now. Thank you. Um, what are they seeing? What kind of change are they seeing in this awesome change in their dad? What are they talking about at the dinner table that they love about the new pandemic dad? <laughs> Um, well, first of all, you're at the dinner table. Yeah. It's probably incredible to, to, to begin with. Yeah, that, that's the cool thing is that everyone has, you know, a participatory role in the family that we're all at home. And, you know, the, I, I swear, if, if I wasn't afraid to take my kids away, I'd film the Mel- Meltzer dinners and it'd be the best selling show since the Cosby's. Uh, like literally, I crack up. I tell my wife, like when the, the older girls leave, you know, because they're shorter on the dinner time than, than the others. 
like I tell my wife, I'm like, I'm so bummed. Like I could have done this for another two hours. This is killing me. And it, you know me, I'm an interviewer. So I'm, I'm poking and prodding and you know, the 10 year old, I get him to pop off and say something. I ask interesting questions. But to me, those dinners, I, I'm not lying. I told someone, I got invited to the Super Bowl uh, this year and to go on media pass, sidelines, the normal stuff that I get to do. And because I'm going to be with my whole family, I made the decision I'm gonna stay at home with my family because I'd rather have dinner, just one dinner, than go to the Super Bowl. Now, it, I will caveat. If the LA Chargers were in the Super Bowl, sorry, dinner time. My, me and my son, we're going to the Charger game. <laughs> where, where is the Super Bowl this year? It's in Tampa. I think, what did they say that they're they're opening up to like first responders? They're doing some pretty cool stuff there. Yeah, in the first 16,000. Right yeah, so it's, it's great. Let's talk San Diego Padres baseball for a second. Yeah, man, big trade yesterday. Well, first of all, uh, I, I love Tatis is getting national endorsements now. I think that's huge. I think he's an absolute rock star and it's smart there. I love how the management there is putting in, they're, they're making moves. It's very similar. Like, the Mets is a little bit different story because after all these years, we finally got real ownership in place there, which as a diehard Mets fan, yeah, I can't tell you. But they're making moves. Blake Snell for some prospects. I mean, they're doing the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams are in, you know, my biggest two uh, Hanukkah investments, uh, I have the number one Justin Herbert rookie card. Uh, so that's going to be a gold. And as long as he stays healthy like any other football player. But I also, you know, nutted up and got the, the Tatis rookie card already seasoned for like eleven $1 hundred dollars. Uh, I think it's going to be like Trout's rookie card someday. We'll be sitting there laughing our way to the bank, selling off Tatis. Yeah, no, it's going to be great. So, Dave, I have my next guest, Lorena, coming in a moment. You and I can talk forever, and we'll certainly continue the conversation. But leave everybody here, you know, what should be our number one goal, our mantra, our focus to head into 2021? Because I think everyone knows that, like, the clock is going to strike, you know, 11.59, and all of a sudden everything's going to go away. We're still going to be the same exact situation that we're in later, and we have to be real about that. But how do we keep our eye on the prize here? For me, it's make every day New Year's Day. What I've done in 2020 and I'm gonna do in 2021 is make every single day my New Year's Day. Wake up with gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration every day. Take an inventory of my values, asking and attracting, studying my calendar, doing it now, and most importantly, practicing ending fear. I'm gonna spend minutes and moments in fear, not hours, days, weeks, or months. So remember everybody, the way you do that to make every day your New Year's Day is simply be kind to your future self and do good deeds. I promise you, every day would be a New Year's Day. Awesome. Dave, I greatly appreciate, respect you and everything that you do for everybody out there. We'll be in touch in the New York. I'll catch up with you offline. Have a great, happy, healthy, prosperous New Year to you and your family. Get my robe ready for the fifth appearance next time. Thanks, Adam. That's right. Let's bring in my next guest. Take care. Next day.